All right, first step for these problems, for any statics problems, is starting off with the free body diagram, right? So that's what I have here. Um, we're dealing with a pin and a rocker. Uh, both of those, um, I forget, the joints, I forget what you call them. My bad, it's been a while since I've seen statics, but uh, their reaction is only uh, a force, okay? They don't resist any moments, nothing like that. So in this case, at pin A, you have resisting force in the y and in the x direction okay and then the rocker is like a roller okay and it doesn't have uh it, it just has a, a reaction okay so in this case uh it's pushing right up against the point b here but because it's at an angle you're gonna have to break this down into two components okay so this problem is really easy i mean uh well, at least for me it is right <laughs> uh i'll explain in detail how you do statics problems uh, what helped me kind of uh, ensure that uh, I knew the, the correct process when I was taking the class, right? Um, and I was real fortunate to have a good professor at the time. And I'll kind of give you guys all the hints. Um, and I'll show you as we go along, right? But the next step after you make your free body diagram, you're going to want to zoom in at B, okay? Because look, when you do the free body diagram, it's just pointing into the node or into the joint, right? And that's it. In FEA, you call these nodes, okay? Just FYI. Um, and that, but that's like four years later. I mean, senior year of your mechanical engineering. Um, but uh, in this case, I got to break this down into an X component and a Y component, okay? So something going up and something going down. So this is a trick I used to do. It was pointing into the node. So you have to see it, right? Look, it's slanted 30 degrees. That's what the problem says. So originally, this is your axis, right? Let, let's say... Uh, the red pencil is the y-axis, blue is the x, okay? Let me kind of hold it right there, okay? I'll just hold it like this. It's slanted 30, so look at the blue pencil. It's going to slant 30 degrees, right? And that's what you're seeing right here. But look at the red one, too. It also slanted 30 degrees. So that 30 degrees that it's slanted moves here, okay? And then that means this one's 60 degrees, Okay, so now that I zoomed in, this is the step I'm doing, right? Step two. Now that I zoomed in, um, I'm looking at this right here, 30 degrees, right? My red pencil got slanted 30, and that's where we're at now. Okay, so this is our reaction at B, the big B, right? Uh, that's just the actual magnitude of the X and Y components. So we got to break this vector up into two. So you... Pretty much, you start at the end of the, the tail of the vector, right? And you get to the head, okay? Um, and you get there using the traditional X and Y system. Because in this case, our beam is straight. So we're going to use this system, right, to get to that tailgate. So you can either go uh, perfectly to the left or right and perfectly up and down. And you'll see how in future problems, that method kind of changes, okay? But in this case... We can only move left or right and then up and down to get to the head of the vector. So in this case, I'm going to move and I got to start at the tail, right? I'm going to move to the left and then I'm going to go straight up. And it's that simple, right? It's just your X component and your Y component. This is the X component because it's going in the blue pencils direction, right? And then the Y one is in the red pencils direction. So that's how you split it up. Um, and after that, the whole point of this is to replace this vector with two nice vectors, one going up, one going to the side in this case, right? We already figured that out. And get that in terms of B, okay? And you'll see what I mean right here. In this case, I found that this was 60 degrees, just using trigonometry. Um, getting BY was just sine 60 is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, right? So in this case, sine 60 is equal to BY over B. And that's just sine 60 is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. And then cosine 60 is BX over B. And that's what I have here, okay? And once you get that, uh, you get these two numbers, BY, ignore this for a second. You get BY and BX, right? That's all I did. Now, I'm going to use these numbers later, but now I have BY and BX in terms of B. And that's going to be real helpful once we start doing our, our method, and, and you'll see in a second. Let me kind of move it down a little bit. There you go. So this is the new free body diagram. As you can see, everything stayed the same. And I didn't explain it in detail in the beginning too much. My bad, I kind of skipped it. But you have 4,000 coming down here, right? Two meters away from B. So that's that. Uh, AX, I mean, um, the, the pin at A has two reactions, one in the X direction, right? You, if you, you can't pull it this way, it's going to be fixed. 
I don't want to say fix. I'm sorry. It's going to not displace. How about that? Because fix is a whole new um, joint, pretty much. And then uh, you're going to have a, you're going to resist force in the Y direction. That's what that's saying. Okay. So you're going to have an AX and a Y. And that's what you have here. In this case, from here to here, all I did was replace this B into these two. And now you're going to see how, how easy the problem gets. Now, this statics course, it really is just using these three equations, okay? You have to use these three. And this one could be a lot, right? It doesn't have to be. Uh, there's only one force in the Y, one force in the X, right? But there, you can make a lot of moment equations depending on your scenario. And you'll see what I mean in a second. But you have to use these three to find the um, your unknowns, right? Um, so if we go ahead and do that, now before I go to the next step, I'm going to look at it with you guys. Let's see what we can do, okay? Let's do some of the forces in the Y. Well, yeah, some of the forces in the Y, it's AY minus 4,000 plus BY. AX and BX are not in the Y direction, so I don't care about those in this specific case. But I have two unknowns, so I don't want to use that yet. Okay, let's see if I can use something else. Let's do some of the forces in the X. AX and BX are the only ones in the X direction, and they're opposite in sign. So in my case, they're going to be equal to each other. But there's still two unknowns. That's useless to me. I don't care about that, right? I need something that's going to give me one solid answer kind of thing. And guess what you could do? You could just take a moment. I'm looking at it, right? I'm looking at the moment now. And I'm going to take a moment about A or B. Well, why do you want to do that? Because look, if you take it about A, any force going through that node, right? Uh, that point, in this case, point A it's not gonna cause any moment, right? Because moment is equal to force times distance. So if distance is zero, then you're not gonna have any moment. So in this case, if you take it about A, AY and AX don't produce a moment. BY will because it's at a distance from A, but BX will not because it's going through A. So that's how I know I'm gonna use a moment. I could take it at A, and in the same case, I could take it at B. In this case, I take it at B, okay? So if I take it at B, BY and BX go through that point, so it's not going to produce a moment. AX goes through B, so it's not going to produce a moment. AY doesn't, so that's going to produce a moment, a clockwise moment, right? It's going to go around B, and then 4,000 is going to go counterclockwise, okay? So these two, uh, let me use this other pencil. These two right here are going to produce moments, and that's what I did here. Sum of the moments about B is equal to zero, right? Counterclockwise is positive, so minus because a y is going to produce a count a clockwise moment it's negative a y times your distance six plus two eight now four thousand is going to make a counterclockwise moment so that's positive four thousand right the magnitude of the force times your distance to b in this case it's two now i could solve for a y and i get a thousand the fact that it's positive means that i assume this correctly it doesn't matter if you assume this negative or positive uh, arrow going down or up or left to right, right for AX and BX. It doesn't matter. At the end of the day, you'll just have a negative number if you assumed it wrong. So you just have to know how to interpret your results. Doesn't mean it's not going to mess you up. Don't worry. Just stay consistent with your problem. Okay. Now, if we go to step, uh, oh, that was step five. Now let's go to step six. But before we go there, let me kind of work it with you guys. What would you guys do? Now that we have AY, right? Now I could do some of the forces in the Y, right? Because now I have AY, I have 4,000 coming down, but I don't know BY. There's nothing else in the Y direction, so that means I could find BY, okay? And I either, look, I can't even say it here. You can either do a sum of the, force, uh, sum of the forces in the Y, which is what I just told you guys, or you could do a sum of the moments about A. Because now that you have, well, I mean, AY is not going to matter when you take a moment about A, but you can find BY, right? And if you do it, you'll get the same answer, by the way. Do this or this. Just do it. This time, 4,000 is going to make a negative moment, and BY is going to make a positive counterclockwise moment about this point. But in this case, some of the forces in the Y is easier. Or look, I actually did both of it for you guys. So, so ignore step seven. But look, if you do some of the moments about A, follow what I just did. BY is producing a positive, right, about this point. You're going around this way. So that's positive, and it's 8 meters away. So BY times 8. 4,000 times 6 is producing a negative. It's clockwise. 
4,000 times 6. So just plug in your numbers, right? We already found by here. Just plug that in, uh, and then you get b is equal to 3464. Let's verify it using this one now. It should give you the same answer, and it does, right? a y going up, 4,000 coming down, b y going up. You're doing some of the forces in the y direction. So only up and down. And even uh, in this case, b x and a x don't do anything. Plug in your numbers, right? b y was just b sine 60 from here, and you get the same number. So it checks off, okay? Now that you have uh, B in this case, well, now you can just plug in B over here and then solve for BX. And then you can also solve for BY, right? Because we already found B. So when you do that, let me go ahead and hide this like that. BX, plug in BX is equal to B cos from step two, which is right here, right? BX is equal to 1732 newtons. Okay, and then by, make sure you guys could see, by um, is the same from step two or step six. Uh, you can use uh, right here, uh, by in this case, I used b sine 60, I already found b. Or you could just use this equation, right? 4,000 times six is 24,000 divided by eight, that's 3,000. So by, and all that's equal to zero. So move 24,000 to this side, divided by 8, by is equal to 3,000. Boom. Step 9, we're almost there, guys. Don't trip. Um, let me just cover step 10 just to focus on step 9. Some of the forces in the x, now we got to find ax, right? We already found bx, by. Now you need ax, and we already found ay. ax is nothing more than equal to bx, right? Remember? ax is equal to bx. When you do with some of the forces in the x direction, you will get zero, right? It's it's all equal to zero. It all has to be uh, in equilibrium. That's the whole point of statics, guys. If you guys don't haven't realized, go to Google, type in statics definition. This whole class, the system is not moving. So everything is equal to zero. Some of the moments are equal to zero. Some of the forces in the y equal zero. Some of the forces in the x equal zero. It's like this table right now. Look, look at that pencil. That pencil is applying a force on the table, and the table is doing an opposite force. Uh, reacting right to the weight of this pencil it's not moving but it's still there right now let's take a car car is parked on the parking lot not moving that's a static system as soon as that car starts if you put it in drive and you start driving it well now it's a dynamic system and you'll learn that in dynamics okay but this class is just statics everything is staying still the system is not moving a building uh a wall i don't know right just anything but once you start talking about like planes that are in the sky moving, cars, uh, all that good stuff, that's dynamics, okay? Now that, well, we found AX, right? Just some of the forces in the X is zero is equal to AX, positive AX, minus BX. Boom, you get that number. Then, to get the magnitude of A, right, uh, is just this squared plus this squared is equal to the magnitude squared. That's just Pythagorean theorem right right here you don't see it but there is a angled force going this way in the pointing into what quadrant two right um the reason being because this one's inclined and it kind of makes sense right if you put four thousand here this one is pushing inwards right so that means this one also has to push inwards because if it wasn't this thing would just want to move to the left but this one's reacting like, hey, nah, I know you're trying to move this way, right? Because of BX, but that AX is like, nah, you're not going anywhere kind of thing. And yeah, that's kind of the answer right there. Boom, A is equal to 2000 in this case. Um, now, let me just, this is the first statics video that I upload. Let me just show you guys real quick. You, I mean, the problem's finished. You're probably going to exit the video, but just hear me out. This, this class, you're only focused on finding reactions, okay? The reason you need to know this as an engineer is because now that you know your external forces acting on your system, now you can design this beam to to withstand these forces, okay? A plane flies. Planes weigh something, right? A 747, ah, shit, maybe like 200,000 pounds. Um, uh, maybe, maybe more, right? I can't remember. I know Boeing 747s are in the million, maybe 900,000, depending on how much you're carrying, right? So that plane is in equilibrium when it's in when it's flying, okay? Doesn't mean it's not moving, it just means in equilibrium, okay? Some of the forces equals MA. 
but forces are acting on your plane. So how are you going to design your plane? Uh, the, the beam in this case, right? The, the wing is a beam. So how are you going to design it? How thick, how, how long, uh, what shape, what cross section, right? Uh, to withstand these forces. And you'll see that in later classes. That's why engineering is really cool in my opinion, but all that, this class is really, really important guys. Um, it, I mean, it sucks, you know, it's very, com it looks complicated. It's not, you just need to practice it. That's all. But that's kind of like a quick intro as to what engineering is. That's why I started liking these classes moving forward. Um, I did really good in this class cause it just stuck to me, but I wish you guys the best and I'll do more videos, but for now we'll just kind of keep going slow, steady, steady pace, all that good stuff. Right. But that's kind of why you're doing all this. Okay. You need to know why you're doing these problems. It's not as simple as just, oh, I just want A, you know, uh, we all want the A, I, I was there too, but you need to understand what it is you're doing. And I feel that's what schools don't emphasize. Um, I hope with this video, you were able to kind of just like understand just a little bit. And if you keep watching the other ones, you'll understand it better. But uh, for now, just let me know if you have questions. Um, yeah, thanks.